Pawn Stars is all about weird people making wild deals over crazy items, with Pawn Stars winning almost every time in the end. Emphasis on almost. A select few sellers have been able to scam buyers and make fools of them. We'll be looking at the times Pawn Stars got scammed in this video, so stay tuned. We all know Rick is a very cautious guy who doesn't buy anything without authenticating it first, but it wasn't the case here. In this episode of Pawn Stars, Corey's Big Play, Rick made the unusual mistake of buying something he was unsure of before he had it authenticated. He paid $450 on what he believed to be a 19th century Wells Fargo strongbox. Who wouldn't want to pay that much for something so old, right? Well, his hopes of a profit were shot down by an expert who called the box a complete fantasy piece. The seller also brought the box in stuffed with two ball and chain sets he thought were artifacts from the Yuma and Folsom prisons, but Rick recognized them as fakes right away, meaning Rick should have sensed something wasn't right with the box. The old man, who observed the whole transaction, wasted no time rubbing it in, telling Rick, I thought it was fake to start with but he let the deal go through just so he could have something to hang over Rick's head. We know this made your sixth sense tingle. Actually, this specific case regarding stolen diamonds wasn't something that transpired while Pawn Stars was on the air, but it's also worth bringing up since the ones that got away with it will likely be telling their grandkids about that time they pulled the rug out from underneath the owners of the most famous pawn shop in the world. The most surprising part of this story is that it didn't happen to an inexperienced or ever befuddled Chum Lee. No, it actually happened to the immensely knowledgeable and experienced Rick. This seller did a fantastic job giving all the right answers to put Rick at ease and sucker him into a deal, which is exactly what happened. Eventually, the police arrived to recover the goods and Rick was out $40,000. Chum Lee may be the most lucrative star of the show, and he's also very obviously the favorite cast member among fans, but he doesn't exactly have a good reputation when it comes to skills related to the pawn shop. A prime example of this was when Chum Lee was suckered into a terribly bad deal that not only had him go over his reasonable purchase limit of $1,000, but also proved that he doesn't have that good an eye when it comes to spotting fakes. In short, a seller offered Chum Lee a Gibson mandolin, and despite numerous red flags regarding its appearance, feel, and construction, the pawnbroker purchased it for $1,500. Sadly for good old Chum, the mandolin was a very poorly done fake, but the seller certainly loved his time in the spotlight since he got to make illicit cash and embarrass Chum Lee in front of the world. We cannot blame the Pawn Stars cast for this purchase. Everyone wants to get their hands on long-lost treasure. Instead of it being a mere fantasy for this particular seller, it turned out to be an absolutely insane reality as he discovered a gold bar from a Spanish shipwreck. The man found the gold bar while cleaning out his grandparents' things after their death. Already worth an immense amount in gold, the seller must be extremely happy that they were on Pawn Stars since Rick's expert realized the value was even greater due to where the gold came from. What makes this even more amazing is that the seller was already fairly aware of the item's value, but instead of selling it right away, he waited for Rick's expert to appraise its true worth. The seller made an offer first at $48,000, and Rick countered with $32,000. Eventually, they agreed to $35,000, which is still a hefty price for a random gold bar found in your grandparents' stuff, that's for sure. If you're a regular watcher of the show, you probably know this one. We all know musical instruments, typically guitars, are a major part of Rick's business in terms of both buying and selling. One particular seller aimed to sell an electric guitar allegedly owned by Jimi Hendrix. Rick was immediately enamored, and after having a buddy verify it, Rick tried to buy it for $600,000, but the seller refused. Sometime later, the very same guitar was being sold by the same expert called to authenticate the item, suggesting that the expert later gave the seller what he wanted, all thanks to appearing on Pawn Stars. It's not unusual to see this kind of behavior when it comes to the buying and reselling of goods, but it must have hurt Rick to know that one of his trusted buddies ended up making a backdoor deal. When your item is one of the most iconic guns in the entirety of the world, there's always going to be some kind of value surrounding it for the right kind of collector. And Rick knows it, hence the pawn shop's massive selection of antique firearms. 
Rick saw dollar signs in his eyes when a seller brought in an engraved Wild West era Colt 45 in outstanding condition and sprung at the chance to scoop it up. The value of the gun was estimated to be in the $8,500 range, and Rick, being Rick, offered the seller $3,000. But here's where the real sense of regret comes in. The seller admitted he only bought the gun for $25 and succumbed to the $3,000 offer despite being so low. Now the seller has to live with the shame for eternity, especially since the item is actually worth up to as much as $42,000. Ouch! This isn't directly related to the show, but it's worth a mention. When Cubic Zirconia, a synthetic diamond doppelganger, first hit the market in the late 70s and early 80s, many a pawn shop was duped. Nobody knew about them, and they tested as diamonds. Everybody in the industry bought a bunch of them. Old man Richard Harrison said he wasted nearly $30,000 on them. Cubic Zirconia doesn't pose much of a problem for today's pawn trade. The old man's grandson, Corey Big Hoss Harrison, even filmed a DIY video for the History Channel in 2009 called How to Spot a Fake Diamond. In short, the faux rocks are too perfect. There are very, very few perfect diamonds out there, so the hawker on the street probably doesn't own one. Rick is not a stupid man. In fact, he's pretty smart, which is the reason he has made millions of dollars. But he has also made some questionable mistakes. In Season 6, Rick made another ill-fated gamble without consulting his trustworthy experts. He paid $13,000 for a book he believed might contain the authentic signature of baseball great Shoeless Joe Jackson. Rick couldn't have been more excited during the appraisal, saying, This is absolutely incredible, and speculating that it might be the rarest sports signature, period, because Jackson was illiterate. But despite the seller's questionable certificate of authenticity and Rick's own reservations, he bought it anyway. After hearing from Rebecca, his book expert, that the signature was likely a fake, Rick then sent it out to another authenticator, who reiterated the bad news. Not only was it a forgery, it was a laughably bad one. Considered to be one of the greatest films ever made, it's no surprise that any memorabilia related to The Godfather would fetch an enormous price, especially when signatures are involved. That was the intention of a seller, at least, who brought in her Godfather screenplay, signed by someone named Al. After an expert verified that the Al in question was none other than Al Pacino, the seller had more than enough fuel in her fire to turn down Rick's low offer. Instead, she turned up to an auction and ended up receiving $12,000 for the script, likely thanks to her appearance on the show. The weirdest, best part though? The signature wasn't Pacino's after all, but the producer of the film, another Al. This obviously would have affected the value greatly, but the seller ended up scoring big before the damage could be done. Let us know what you think about Pawn Stars in the comments. And also, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons for more amazing content. We'll see you in the next video.